I'm Matt Shoemaker. Welcome to Tech Forum. we've got an, an interesting project to to highlight for those of you that were watching my channel before the the Tesla videos you'll remember that it was mostly electric bikes and just uh, little one take videos of the GoPro mounted to the frame or walk around videos of the bikes and um, this is my my latest project and it's not it's not a bike it's not a car what is it uh, this this project started about a year back when um, the owners of Outrider USA contacted me to do a project with them. And uh, Outrider is a company that makes what they call lightweight adventure vehicles. It's very similar to what this is here. Much of what you see here was designed and built by the men at Outrider USA uh, out on the East Coast. And much of what you see I built for them. Initially, these vehicles start as a, a trike this front end suspension system with the battery box, the steering tillers, the seat, and at the rear there would normally be a single wheel. And that is done mainly because for legal reasons a pedalable vehicle must have three wheels or fewer in order to be classified as a bicycle and therefore legal for use on public roads. And um, because of that the men at Outrider designed the chassis to be three wheels. Um, typically, two wheels in front and one in the rear, what they call a tadpole trike design, is more stable than a delta trike, which is what most people think about when you, they hear the word trike. A delta design is two wheels in the rear and one in the front. But for steering purposes, most cornering stability is found in tadpole trikes, where you have two wheels up in front, one in the rear. Uh, however, Outrider USA is located in a mountainous area with a lot of gravel fire roads and such where street legality really isn't as much of a concern and they wanted a four-wheeled vehicle primarily for the added traction and stability that two rear wheels provides. So I was contacted by Tommy from Outrider USA, the owner, and um, regarding developing this quad rear end assembly for them. So Outrider sent me a chassis kit, which was the aluminum battery box, complete front suspension, the pedal boom, the steering, and the seat. In turn, I, I provided for them a quad rear end uh, live axle assembly, similar to what you'd see on an ATV. The swing arm was mo heavily modified in order to accept the straight axle for the two wheels. I designed the complete drive system, which is different than what Outrider sells. Outrider USA uses a very similar motor manufactured by Astro Flight, but they use their own proprietary housing and a planetary gear reduction, which works very, very well for their application. Also, for street legality reasons, there are power limitations. Since there wasn't as much a concern about making this vehicle legal, we could go with a greater amount of power. So I included one of my own high-powered drive units. This is a fan-cooled Astroflight 3220 motor. It's my own proprietary design that Astroflight makes for me. My own reduction system, uh, what we call the Da Vinci Drive because of its artistic and organic shape. 
to a belt drive with a torque limiter. That torque limiter allows a small amount of slippage of the pulley within the, the pulley hub if indeed something were to jam in the, in the drive line. That drives a jack shaft to a chain to the rear end. There is a free wheel here, so as you coast, if you cut the throttle, the drive unit can stop and yet the chain can free wheel at that point. So at the rear, what I designed was a complete double axle rear end assembly. This is a carbon fiber tube that we're using as an axle. This carbon fiber tube, it's, it's a uh, eighth inch wall thickness, one and one eighth inch diameter carbon tube that uh, is spinning in just basic radial bearings. And at the sides, you can see the, the axle hubs. The, um, these hubs were designed by myself specifically for this project and custom made for me. They are different than any other hub in, in, in numerous ways. One specific item was the distance between the hub flanges. I wanted to increase that distance as far as was reasonably uh, possible because that gives a greater amount of spoke angle, better triangulation for better side loading. Knowing that we were going to be drifting this, uh, this quad, this, this vehicle, I wanted to know that I had good side loading. So large flange diameter and width between the flanges gives much greater strength at the rear wheels. Then we've got the sprocket, which is mounted to a, uh, its own hub, similar to the, to the clamping system here that clamps to the axle. Got a sprocket mount, a brake disc mount, and then a, a pedaling freewheel mount. This unit does have, have pedals, though admittedly I rarely use them. So, but you can pedal it or run the electric drive or both, so it's technically a hybrid. These wheels are my own proprietary design. They're 47 millimeter wide, double wall thickness aluminum wheels that were made for me by Jet Set Wheels in Taiwan. They're extra wide, extra strong. They're, they're technically the same as what you'd see on a trials bicycle. Uh, although on a trials bike, they would have lightweight cutouts between the spokes, but I eliminated that because I just wanted the strength. Greater amount of width is important on a vehicle that doesn't lean because you get much greater side load uh, stability uh, on the tires, less sidewall roll in cornering. So wide wheels are very important for that. I have the same extra wide wheels up front. The skid plate is eighth inch thick. It's made out of a material called G10, and that protects the sprocket and the brake disc and debris from, from uh, underneath the vehicle. And then I made these Nerf bars, very similar to what you'd see on an ATV and they are designed to protect the vehicle should i slide into a tree or something to protect keep from catching one of the uh, one of the wheels at the rear and breaking the axle so those that's the reason for those sides side, side uh, guards or nerf bars moving up front again this is this complete front suspension assembly was manufactured by outrider usa and it's completely stock i made no changes to it whatsoever all i did was put my extra wide wheels on it and um, also the, uh, the spring-loaded idler assembly for the pedal chain is my own proprietary design. And being that this vehicle has a, a straight rear axle, there's no derailleur hanging down low that would add tension to the chain. So as the suspension moves up and down, the pedal chain, there's a length change uh, in that and therefore you need a spring-loaded tensioner assembly. So these are skateboard wheels that I spun down on the lathe and I made my own ball bearing pivoted aluminum tensioning arm just to hold tension on the chain as the suspension moves up and down, keep the chain from coming off. Uh, if you come around here, on this side you've got uh, the motor controller is in this box along with the the power relay and uh, high current circuit breaker here. So when you turn it on, this is the ignition key, you can hear it, hear the, uh, the controller power up. That means it's now armed when the motor has chirped. So the motor controller is inside this box, it's fan cooled along with the power relay. This lead is a quick disconnect that goes between the throttle interface box and the controller. 
I can make any program changes within the controller or download data off of the onboard data logger through this lead here. Inside the battery box, at roughly this, this section, sort of at the center, full width, full height of the box, is a 49 volt, 60 amp hour lithium polymer battery. So close to three kilowatt hours, I'd say two and a half kilowatt hours of usable energy in that pack, which is plenty to give several hours of riding. My son and I probably put an hour, hour and a half of riding on it, and we find that we've only used 25 or 30 percent of the charge uh, at that in that um, duration of riding. I currently have this geared for 25 miles an hour top speed. It has enough power to, goodness, probably go 60. However, as an off-road vehicle, we found that 25 is plenty. Also, when we tried gearing it taller, it uh, the motor ran hotter, the controller ran hotter, and it really wasn't any more fun. It just was more dangerous. So we found 25 miles an hour for the riding around in the, in the fields and trails and that that we have in this area is perfect. So I haven't weighed it yet, but my guess would be all up weight is probably in the 125 to 130 pound range. And it, uh, I probably have, if I had to guess, 100 hours of time uh, maybe more than a maybe more than that 150 hours of time possibly in the design work for the rear end and the assembly this was the the payment that I received from Outrider to do this engineering job for them was the chassis itself uh, they uh, they provided the chassis I did all the design work and provided them with one com mechanically complete rear end assembly and um, so I wanted to do that to help them out. They're a wonderful organization, and this was a project that they really didn't have the funds to do internally. So the power system at peak under acceleration will put out 14,000 watts, or it, it draws 14,000 watts from the battery. And um, so I would say it probably puts down 12 or 13 horsepower to the ground. So geared for 25 miles an hour as it is, it's quite a powerful vehicle. On the pavement, it accelerates really hard. It's a lot like driving my Tesla, just not nearly as fast. But uh, I'd say every bit is as hard pull against the seat. In fact, probably even a little bit harder. It will actually turn the tires on pavement. It will drift on the pavement. But it's a little sketchy, and I don't want it to catch and, and tip. So I prefer drifting it in the grass. But aside from that, this is a vehicle that I've been wanting to build for quite some time and my son really loves it. It's the closest thing you can get to a go-kart without being hassled by the police and the neighbors. So uh, I've got plenty of other projects in the workshop right now that I'm working on. A couple projects that are finished that we'll do another walk around video like this. And uh, so keep your eye on this space. We do have other Tesla videos as well as uh, videos on other automobiles that we're gonna be doing soon. So. Go ahead and click the subscribe button below. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them. I'll do my best to answer whatever questions I can. So again, thanks for tuning in. Peace.